everybody, it's Jen from Jen Geigley Knits. I am back from New York City in Iowa where the trees are all like hitting peak color here too. I think I just timed it perfectly to see all the New York beautiful leaves and then come home to our beautiful leaves, so not too bad. Um, but I just returned from New York City. We added a few days onto our Rhinebeck experience in the city. I, I like to do that. Um, just to experience everything. I can't really fly into LaGuardia and then just leave without <laughs> running around the city for a couple of days. So I don't regret that at all. Um, I'm wearing my upstate New York t-shirt to represent for this video. And um, I attended this weekend with my friend Erica, who is local here in Des Moines, a local knitting friend. And we had a great weekend overall despite a little bit of rain, but this will be kind of remembered, I think, as the rainy Rhinebeck, um, or as my friend Anna would say, it's called fun type two. Like not your perfect average normal fun where, you know, last year our weather was perfect and it was sunny and the leaves were beautiful. We were standing under the trees and it was like 60 degrees. And this year it was more like standing on the hill with umbrellas. Still seeing our friends though, still doing all the things we would normally do, mostly just, you know, the rain throws a little bit of a, you know, wrench in your normal plans, but it was still a wonderful weekend overall um, with some little things here and there, and I'll talk about that in a minute. But so we flew to New York Thursday, attended Cake Palooza and Wool and Folk. Friday. I'll get into it in a minute. I know. <laughs> You're in my DMs asking. I, I know. I'll get there. <laughs> uh, Saturday, New York sheep and wool rain off and on that day. It did let up a little bit. Sat Sunday, New York sheep and wool, no rain, colder temperatures, but we were like, yes, we'll take it. And then <clears throat> we went back to the city Monday and Tuesday and part of Wednesday and then flew home Wednesday night. So I'm tired. I'm so grateful I didn't get sick while I was there. We were really trying to not get sick. We were, you know, I heard coughing everywhere and I was just like, oh my gosh, it freaks me out. But we were chomping on our vitamin C and our airborne all weekend. We had like a little roommate supply. <laughs> but we had a really cute house in Red Hook that we stayed in. I'm jumping around on this, I know a lot, but um, this is like a little pre-video for a quick little video that Erica and I did in our little Rhinebeck house. We did a little recap of our purchases and what we were knitting and our Rhinebeck sweaters while we were staying there in our little Red Hook house. So I'm gonna post that next, but I just wanna do a little intro first. And then I'm gonna make a separate video that will come out next of like all the video I took while we were there of the experience of New York Sheep and Wool and most of that type of stuff, like some of the booths and what they had, what it looks like when you're walking around, the food, the experience, and then a little bit of New York at the end. So um, with that, I'm going to say, I'll just get into Wool and Folk because everybody's talking about it. It's on the Reddits. It's even people who aren't into the Rhinebeck experience and all that are talking about like, what the heck happened at this event? And sadly, it just didn't go as we had all hoped. And I feel terrible now, now that I'm home, I'm like seeing more of the aftermath. So anyway, Wolf Folk, everybody's in my DMs asking me about Wolf Folk because they know I went and last year it was a beautiful event. It was very different this year, sadly, and that's what was really unexpected, and I still don't understand what exactly happened. But um, yes, we attended, Erica and I. Um, it was wonderful to see everyone. That's always my favorite part. All the vendors, my friends, um, other designers, and I got to hang out with my dear friends at the Modern Daily Knitting booth, where we had a little book signing and hangout. That was kind of right when we got there, and it was raining. Um, there were some definitely some serious issues, um, but the number one thing we can do now is to support the vendors and the small businesses now that the event is over. 
follow them on Instagram. That's actually something really easy to do that doesn't cost any money. Not everybody has money to blow on yarn right now. I get it. <laughs> um, I just spent so much money just on this trip. It's, a, it's an expensive trip um, <clears throat> with room and board and flights and all the stuff. So, but follow these shops on Instagram. I'm going to leave a list below. Check out their shops and see if there's anything you might need for your sweater project or something else that appeals to you. Anything helps. Um, I'm going to link their shops or at least list them in the show notes below. I'm going to try to find Modern Daily Knitting also has a very good list with links to all the shops and that's really important. Um, they did a really good job and some other people have compiled lists on Instagram. <clears throat> Sorry, but yes, let's support them now that the show is over. Um, now that I'm back home and have been listening to everyone's stories, there's like videos on Instagram, there's videos on YouTube. Um, mostly from the vendors who were really affected negatively by this show. Um, I'm now seeing it's so much worse than many of us attendees may have realized. And those sweet vendors were probably putting on a happy face and trying to get through it the best they could. But I know there was like tears and hardships involved. And it was, it's just really upsetting now that I am finding out the behind the scenes stuff that happened. Um, we definitely noticed several issues that everybody else, it's been previously stated by others who were there in all the videos, um, but the biggest ones were the a lack of accessibility and safety were the biggest issues. Um, the rain was part of the problem, but not entirely because it really did rain all weekend. It rained at Cake Palooza, which we had went to before. Cake Palooza was wonderful, honestly. Um, so we went Saturday, Friday morning to Cake Palooza. It was raining pretty much the whole time we were there. Maybe it let up a little bit, um, but that was a very beautifully done event with there was time tickets. So there's not too many people rushing in at once. You just have one set group for your time slot and then you leave at the end of your time slot. And the layout is very predictable from last year and when I've gone before, it's like the same amount of booths, the same space, and it's walkable and you can see everything. And that event was fantastic and we loved it. Um, but yeah, it rained there and that event did not have the same issues. It rained at New York Sheep and Wool and that event did not have the same issues as Wool and Folk. So we did really notice like this one event had <clears throat> a lot of pretty serious problems, unfortunately. Um, as an able-bodied attendee, I was slipping and sliding through the mud and my boots were sinking into the ground like quicksand and there was, you know, flooding, but that's nothing compared to what the vendors and the differently abled attendees went through. And I feel so bad. Uh, we, like so many others, were under the impression that this was an indoor event. And I think that was stated or emailed or something that this was being moved to this new location because it was going to be indoors because this weather has been happening. I think it's been raining in New York like every weekend for a month or more, and it's like a record of rainy weather. So um, maybe the intentions were good there, but it did not really work out very well. Um, we were shocked when we got there to see so many vendors in tents outside and kind of crammed in under those shelters outside. It was not spaced out very well. Um, and then we were surprised to find out that some of the, the vendors were inside the building, but only on the first floor and the fifth floor of the Forland building. Um, and there was one tiny elevator, but we didn't even attempt to get on it. And there was like a line and a crowd in front of that. And then there was these crowded stairwells. <clears throat> and so we asked someone where we could find the bathrooms. Um, and the response was fifth floor, but only if you like a crowded, hot 90s rave. And we were like laughing, but then we quickly found out what that meant. <laughs> it was accurate. <clears throat> very crowded, very hot, comparable to a 90s rave. It was kind of a funny response. She was, we were all trying to keep our sense of humor, but like, I felt so bad. <clears throat> we were unable to find bathrooms on the map. I don't think they were on the map. And then by the end of the day, we're just kind of bathroom people. We have to pee a lot. Erica and I both, 
neither of us are ashamed to admit it. It's like we drink coffee, we have to go to the bathroom, we're of a certain age and just, we, and bathrooms are just a basic necessity. Everybody was just trying to find a bathroom. <laughs> and by the end of the day, we were able to locate three bathrooms, but then, you know, there were around 3000 people who attended that day. And we later found out the venue capacity was only for like 500 people. And that explains a lot. I have never really seen crowds like that or been kind of stuck in crowds like that. And it's really like we are, we we're all feeling it. Um, the vendor setup and venue capacity made it challenging to view and shop many booths that we were interested in seeing. And there are booths that we were unable to find, unfortunately. The map again was inaccurate because I think a lot of booths have been moved around from what I'm hearing from the stories. People have been moved inside and outside and all over. And so there was a map, but I don't think it was where people ended up at all. Um, I'm heartbroken after listening to so many vendors and sponsors videos now that I'm home and their stories. Um, I will just say they're not exaggerating. Some people are thinking it's you know, people being dramatic. Um, we saw the conditions they endured. And as someone who used to vend at craft fairs and fiber shows in the past, I understand the amount of work, money, time, effort, blood, sweat, and tears that goes into these shows. Um, I know that vendors work for months to prepare for a big show like this. This is a big one. And the setup alone for a booth is so stressful under normal conditions. And hearing about how booths had to relocate at the last minute, sometimes to outdoor areas that didn't have proper cover from the elements. People were moving their booth over to make space for other booths. Some people didn't have a booth space when they got there. Um, and some people packed up and just abandoned their booth space also. It was not ideal. And I just feel so awful for them. Um, some vendors had to leave their yarn and merchandise outside overnight with no security, we are hearing, and end up running into a store to find tarps. Some weren't able to ship their stuff back home after the show because their boxes were taken to cover the mud and the puddles that had formed on the ground. And so we were stepping on their boxes. We had no idea, but someone had taken, they'd like put their boxes aside to ship their stuff home and then someone grabbed them and put them down as like a walkway. Um, I have another friend who just received her boxes from the show and several items were missing. Like the boxes were lighter than when she had packed them. And I don't know what happened this year, but the aftermath is really upsetting. And I feel so bad if you had a hard time at this show and we as attendees did not realize until later what it was like for you guys. So I'm really sorry. Um, my heart also goes out to any attendees who had mobility issues or anxiety from the crowds, which we can all fully under, you know, understand and relate to. The crowds inside the Forland building were unreal and climbing five flights of stairs in a crowded stairwells to find a bathroom was not something we expected at all and not something everyone can physically do. Like I had to take a break on the third floor and it was it was not like an open stairwell. Everybody was trying to just get around and see things or find the bathroom. Um, at the same time, these events are so important to our community. It's so special to have them. Um, there's so many of us that just use these to see our friends, to get out there, to put our faces out there, to meet people, to network, to buy yarn and find our favorite vendors and see things in person that maybe we could only see online otherwise and to discover new vendors. And it's just a huge part of building our community. So it's really sad that this happened this way. And we were also so sad to miss seeing some of our favorite vendors and people we were hoping to see. And we really wish the event had gone better for everyone. Um, many vendors went home without breaking even and travel, lodging, booth expenses really add up fast. I know it's, this is not like 
uh, it's a big decision to vend at something like this and it's just really disappointing that it turned out this way. Um, and once again, the best thing we can do now is to support the vendors and the small businesses that now that the event is over. Um, follow them on Instagram, check out their shops, go take a look around and see if there's anything that you like. Um, that's really all I have to say about Will and Folk. Next up is the little video of me and Erica. We're gonna sit in our little Airbnb and go over some of the stuff we did this weekend, our sweaters, the knitting projects we, br we brought with us that we barely worked on, of course. <laughs> we both brought three projects, like what were we thinking? And then we will show our purchases. This is not, I will say, we were still on kind of a knitting high when we filmed this and we had not seen yet the devastating videos uh, from the vendors and all the aftermath that happened later. We were, this is pre, like we didn't really know yet how serious it was. We knew our experience, but we are like Midwest girls trying to suck it up in the weather and fun type two, like we stood in the rain, but you know, we got through it. So we had a lot easier time than lots of people. And so we were still like, this was great. It was great. We were fine. It was okay. And this is like the rainy run back. So kind of take that into consideration when you watch, cause we're still very like giddy, tired, maybe like delusional, <laughs> not delusional, but like, uh, sleepy, but excited. And we kind of go through what we saw, what we liked, what we picked up along the way. And then yes, next video will be like the video recap of the experience. And I'll be sharing that soon too. But thanks for watching. Thanks for listening to my little explanation of what we experienced over the weekend. Um, sending out love to everybody that is having a hard time after this event and I am hoping to look at the shops this weekend on this list and um, I already, you know, I've, I've already kind of gone through my budget for the weekend because we also had those days in the city and it's expensive, but I want to help any way I can and even, you know, share the list, share the vendors, share the stories on Instagram um, for people who, you know, might be interested in helping these vendors out and getting some great yarn and just sending out love to everybody that we saw this weekend and didn't see this weekend. And I will stop rambling now. Here's me and Erica in our Airbnb going over our stuff. Here's a little video of our cute little cottage in Red Hook. This is like Jen Geigley Knits Rhinebeck edition. This is my friend Erica from Des Moines. And this is our second year going to Rhinebeck and we've been roomies. This year we are just by ourselves in a little cute little house in Red Hook. And while we're here, we thought we would kind of share about our Rhinebeck experience and show you some things that we acquired and things we're knitting and maybe haven't been knitting on very much as much as we thought we would, but yeah, this is Erica, if you want to say hi. Hello, everyone. I'm having a great time. <laughs> I am working on a 2 by 2 rib hat with Jill Draper Yarn Kingston that we purchased last year right. at Rangbeck. I was sure I was going to have this done. I clearly do not. <laughs> <laughs> we have big goals over the year, and then we're all knitting things that we bought last year, which is kind of funny. And yes, we do have matching sweaters. Everybody notices during the day. Um, this was the coldest day of Rhinebeck. Today is Sunday, so we've had we've been here since Thursday. There was events on Friday that we did, and we'll get into that in a minute. Saturday, today's the last day of New York Sheep and Wool, and we it was the coldest, so we wore our Cordy sweaters, which we both made in peace fleece in opposite colors. And so people we didn't even know stopped us today to take pictures <laughs> because we match. And it is kind of fun seeing it side by side now. I'm like, yeah, we really do match. <laughs> <laughs>
But yeah, so what else are you, what did you bring to knit on this trip? And how much have you worked on it on this trip? Sure. Let's so I brought three projects. Um, and so I'm working on the two by two rib hat. Yes. I am working on a pair of uh, socks for my partner, Ian, awesome. in um, nomadic knits. Uh huh. Yarn. Um, and Wait, stitch marker? Is it? Stitch marker is Rhinebecker Buzz. That's cute. From Katrinkles, from Jen last year. <laughs> and then. Cute. I lost mine, so I bought new ones this year. <laughs> I am almost done with the first halibut mitten by Boylan Knits. Yes. To and match she my has sweater. A matching sweater. <laughs> Maybe we should actually pause and show our sweaters. Sure. Because, yeah, she has a matching. We have, yeah, yeah, yeah. One moment, and we'll get our sweaters and bring those in, in a second. And we're back with our sweaters because we realized, and you have good ones that have even like a story. And it's just fun to hear about people's sweaters because we all choose them for a reason during the, you know, the year. So we have this matching one from last year that we wore again this year, but you have new ones that you hadn't worn before. So go ahead and start with yours. Sure. So to match the mittens, we <laughs> have the halibut. That's so good. Yeah, it's perfect. It's the perfect shape, the perfect length, um, a good weight, not super heavy. You got lots colors. of compliments when you were wearing this. Mm -hmm. You wore this last night to the party. Yes. Yep. There was like a little event last night that we went to, hosted by Brooklyn General Lobby Enemy, Mayak, and Neutrino. And it was like a nighttime thing that hasn't really happened before. It was like at a little farm that was like an orchard. And it had campfires and food trucks, and it was kind of neat. And so you wore this is like your extra sweater, maybe that yes. didn't get daytime wear. So it was kind of nice to have an extra, I guess. Yeah, it's a good. It's like very striking. Your colors are so awesome, like that yeah. minty. Love it. Do you want to do it? Do you remember what your yarn is? Yes. It's okay if you don't. So uh, <laughs> Lion Brand Fisherman Wool, and then uh, Cascade Two Twenty. Perfect. Yeah. Two workhorse yarns, I think. No doubt. This is like such a good neutral. Yeah, this is my favorite yarn right now. This just real simple Lion Brands Fisherman Wool. It's like a brown charcoaly heather. It's so smart. And now I'm going to use it too. <laughs> it's like now that I see how, how good it is, it's like a really smart choice for your neutral, whatever you're working with. And yeah, it's a nice balance. Thing. No doubt. All right, awesome. you turn. Okay. Um, I wore this for a bit on Friday morning. Let me tell you what our, what our you schedule cake. was. Cake Palooza. <laughs> cake Palooza. Okay, so <clears throat> we got here Thursday, came to our AB Airbnb. There was nothing Thursday, right? Did we just get settled? No, we got the car after our mix up. Oh, yeah. <laughs> and then... We flew in from Des Moines, Iowa to LaGuardia in New York City. And um, picked we up. We met at the airport at 5 a.m. Yes, we did. <laughs> but then we get here nice and early, which is actually really nice. We have a direct flight from Des Moines, which is wonderful. Some scary turbulence, but that's another story. And then we got ready to pick up our rental car because if you know about Rhinebeck, you do have to drive. You can't just like Uber anywhere or get dropped off. There's just a lot of locations and little towns you have to get yourself to to all the little events and even just New York sheep and wool you can't just usually stay close enough to walk or get there any other way than a rental car unless you live in the area so we picked up our rental car <laughs> and I'm like we're walking down to the number of the lot where we're going and I'm like wow these are all electric and then <laughs> you realize wait is our car plugged in <laughs> Yeah. And we just weren't familiar with this rural area, like where we could plug in a car. And I'm sure it's totally possible, but we don't have experience with that. And we weren't prepared. We hadn't done our research and right. Just, we just weren't ready. <laughs> right. And so Erica's like, did I pick an electric car? <laughs> I did. Maybe. <laughs> I did. It would have, it's fine. But then they switched it and we got a gas car. Yeah. So it's fine. Mm -hmm. And then Erica was like the driver of the weekend 
driver of the year <laughs> because we are from Iowa, but she handled the New York driving like no big deal. All the twisty, turny roads in the rain. And yes, we've had rain a lot of the weekend, which has <laughs> kind of thrown a wrench in some things. Not really, but um, has changed the dynamic of some of the things we've done before without any worry about the weather. But it's all part of the experience and we have totally rolled with it. So yeah, we got here Thursday, settled in, got the Airbnb. And Friday morning was... We went to Perfect Blend. Oh my gosh! Right? We went to Sagartis to Perfect Blend. That was our first stop. And we did the same thing last year and really enjoyed that shop. So we went back there and shopped and had some pizza, got some cookies at the little bakery, and then came to our Airbnb, checked in and got settled, <laughs> unpacked a little bit and chilled and got ready for the next activities. So Friday morning, we had tickets to Cake Palooza at the first slot. It was like the milk ticket. Mm -hmm. from 10 to 12 and then and this is exactly what we did last year as well <laughs> <laughs> but it's like now it's our routine then we went to Woolen Folk at noonish maybe we had lunch in there did we <laughs> or did oh, we, we eat went there? and got coffee we took a coffee break yes mm -hmm. which was smart <laughs> yeah and then there was like rain that day that was somewhat heavy off and on and we weathered the storms and not storms but we weathered the weather and then got to Woolen Folk and parked and got on the shuttle and everything. That went pretty smoothly, that part. Mm -hmm. But then we were still doing some weather and some stuff. And there was like outdoor situations, indoor situations and all this stuff. And navigating it and figuring it out and seeing all the things. And then Friday night was nothing, right? Yes. Saturday. Yes. <laughs> Saturday yeah. was the first day of New York Sheep and Wool. Yep. And we did that like... A regular day I did a little Madeline Tosh meetup on the hill and then we had that party last night at the little farmhouse hosted by Brooklyn General and then today was the last day of New York Sheep and Wool got up kind of a little bit earlier we picked up a friend along the way <laughs> from home our friend Kat was at a punch help needle. me I always say this wrong needle punch, punch? Needle punch yeah like this retreat <laughs> retreat in Vermont and she was kind of on her own on this little adventure. And so she was texting us like, maybe I should come to this sheep and wolf thing you're going to. And we were like, yes, come crash with us on the on this couch. <laughs> and so she did. So she hung out with us today and last night, which was really, really fun to have a friend from home to kind of join us. And then, so we went to New York sheep and wool today, then had dinner with our friends tonight. Also Jill Draper's open air studio after Rhinebeck later this afternoon it's been a lot <laughs> and we are so tired so it's like amazing that we're doing this at all because we are so sleepy and delirious but we kind of wanted to talk about um our experience and what it was like and what we found and what we're working on and just the little nitty details of the weekend because it's kind of interesting maybe and fun but yeah anyway i was going to talk about the sweater i wore this for a little bit at the beginning of friday because I was going to maybe change my sweater in case this one got wet. Because it was kind of pouring <laughs> at the beginning of Cake Palooza. So this is my Rowan Island Blend Francis that I had really not worn out to anything before. And it's really nice and soft. Not super warm, but that day was kind of in the 60s. And it was mm -hmm. a little bit muggy, almost like humid and warm-ish, but rainy. So I wore this with a raincoat and probably nobody saw it anyway. <laughs> it's okay <laughs> and then you can show another sweater you should show this one this one okay or do you want to do your outfit change for that same day oh sure <laughs> <laughs> then i yeah i wore this one the woolen folk because i was gonna go hang out with mdk modern daily knitting and this is their yarn atlas and this is the marcella cardigan that i made with that yarn earlier this year and i used these great buttons that are little tortoises in honor of our pet tortoise. These are from Katrinkles. I don't know if she makes these anymore, but they're really cool. And that was the first time I'd worn this out and it was very cozy and nice for that day. All right. And then <laughs> this, I wore this on Friday, right? So this is the, or is that Saturday? That was Friday. Mm -hmm. Gosh, yeah. we don't know what day anything happened. So this is my Buffalo cardigan. It is from like a 70s era Mary Maxim pattern that I just adapted um, 
to kind of fit updated sizing with updated yarn and then added a vintage um, zipper and then um, it's originally knit in a bulky weight yarn and I used uh, Cascade Eco Wool um, and didn't quite have my gauge right and the fit was a little off and so I added a little extender panel because you know sometimes we don't math correctly genius though um and now it fits kind of like a dream and it, it's on both sides so you can't really tell that it's there it looks but... like it's supposed to be there and it looks awesome <laughs> yeah so if you i knit a lot with vintage patterns and it's really uh sometimes tricky to match the um yarn weight and gauge with vintage yarn and new yarn and I bet and all of that. But so, you did because you're a yeah. genius. <laughs> and she loves vintage and she gets like, this is so worth it. So this whole day that she wore this, people stopped her every three steps to ask about this. And then she got to tell the Mary, Mary Maxim story. And then she was telling me there's other ones with ducks and what, wolves. Yeah, there's ducks and wolves and there's like bowling, wow. cardigans and- It's um, so I've got, I've knit a beaver one before, so there's all kinds of um, different themes that they, I guess, would knit for families, and we heard some history of Mary Maxim, right, out of Michigan, I think, right. or currently out of Michigan, I'm not sure, but really interesting, long-running company, still active, um, and a lot of these patterns you can find online. I'm a big vintage buff, so I ordered the... Um, original patterns off of eBay just because I'm a tactile person but uh, lots of options out there. Did you change the collar? I think like I that? made the collar a little bit bigger uh -huh. so that it has a bigger drape. I love that it's sideways. I just show yeah. it. It's yeah. like a taller collar but sideways garter. I love this. You guys people stopped her all day. <laughs> what is that? Did you make that? Like they couldn't believe you made it because it's so incredible. Sorry, I have to give it its moment. And the back, I was taking pictures of the back of her, like everywhere we went, we were hiking and I like, I'm like, oh, with the trees. Um, look at the buffaloes. Okay, sorry, this, and I was like so happy you brought this. Yeah, this one, it worked out. It was not on the top of my list, but we had to make some changes to uh, work with the weather. weather. I don't like to be cold, so I wanted to make sure that I was nice and warm and cozy and I wouldn't whine the whole day. And this was a good choice. Yeah. 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 Thanks, Jen. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I was like, you have to bring that. That's a wow sweater, and it is. <laughs> and it wowed everybody the whole time. Okay. So I just have, yeah, I just have this one. That's it. This was my Rhinebeck sweater that I made on the LA trip, and it was really quite perfect for the weather too. It's, this is the Sock Hill Farms um, worsted in the black navy or navy black, whatever they call that, spin cycle, dream state in Stay Out of the Forest. And it fits so nicely. I just had a little short sleeve t-shirt underneath and it was like just right for that day. Cause that was, Saturday was warmish, Friday was warmish, and then today, Sunday was the only coldish day, but no rain today. So we were very happy about that. But that was my last sweater. Yeah, and then I also oh. knit the throw over. So we did not intentionally knit the same sweater two years in a row, but when we were at Perfect Blend last year at Rhinebeck, we saw a throw over that they had there and were super inspired to make it. And um, so then we just, it just happened again that we had uh, less, a little bit more subtle matching sweaters but people still notice all day yeah once again it was Andrea pretty fun. Mowry was like ah yes. <laughs> we were looking at the soak booth in one of the barns and we saw her and she saw her we happened to be wearing when we saw her which was convenient yeah and it, yeah it, this we both just loved this sweater so much and then yeah it's it is fun fit. to match but pick your own colors and like yeah, yeah we didn't even plan this at all but we just yeah. both loved it that's what happens mm -hmm. <laughs> And again, mine is Lion Brand Fisherman Wool. Yes. And then um, Spin Cycle purchased um, on a summer vacation from Farmer Daughters Fibers um, in Montana on our way to Glacier. So I like having, you know, everyone likes vacation yarn. So it's nice to be like, oh, yeah. vacation sweaters. We had fun. Kind of. And I got this yarn. 
and now I made this sweater. You have to hold up so. the spit cycle closer so they can see. It's like really awesome to see those changes. I love it. It's so good. Yeah. And I'll show you mine too. It kind of goes from or yellow, orange, red, blue, and kind of a purple at the bottom, which is weird. Yours is very folly. It fits the yeah the it, leaves. It, yeah. The changing leaves. Yeah, it was funny when we got here. Um, it seemed like the leaves were more green. And then as the weekend, seriously, over the weekend, we saw a change with the rain and the temperature changes and things got brighter and brighter and the leaves just got more vivid orange and red. And we always kind of freak out about how pretty the leaves are the whole time we're here. You can't help it because they're stunning. And yeah, it was kind of fun to match the leaves a little bit. <laughs> but those were our sweaters. Is that all uh, of our sweaters? I think so. Cool. What did uh, you bring that you thought you were going to complete knitting-wise? <laughs> did you go through all yours? I did. Yeah, did my you? sock. Mm -hmm. Oh, yeah. Okay. All right. I brought similar-ish. Got very, very, like, did not barely do anything. <laughs> <laughs> I brought, okay, we voted on my last video. I had two of these sock sets from Freya from Modern Daily Knitting, and it was a blue-green set and this set called Punk Rock. And this one just won me over that night before, like the brights. And I just thought it looked fun, but then I realized it started with black. And every time I was knitting this, it was like in the darkish. <laughs> and my eyes are getting worse, but so I didn't get very far at all. But it's, it's okay, we were so busy. So every once in a while I did a row. I'll do a little bit more tonight, probably. This is our last night in our little Airbnb. So yeah, we had to do this little recap tonight. Then I brought that red hat I started at home. It's the Zisu Red by Pancake and Lulu. And I thought, I just imagined myself like maybe going, we might go on a little hike tomorrow and I just imagined that I would be wearing this on a hike. <laughs> and it's not gonna happen because I'm not even to the decreases yet. I think I had to do eight inches. That's definitely like six or seven maybe. Uh, it's not eight. <laughs> like six. Maybe six. If you're Two lucky. inches and then decreasing. <laughs> I know. It's okay. I have other, I brought like three other hats, but I was just like, a red hat would be <laughs> nice, wouldn't it? And then a super old pattern that I just thought, I thought in my mind I could whip up some fingerless mitts <laughs> for this weekend because you know how you have your phone out, or I do because I'm taking pictures and videos the whole time we're here. And I was like, I'll just whip up some quick fingerless mitts. It's this old, old Noro fingerless mitt pattern that's been on Ravelry for 10 years that I had in my queue forever and I had DPNs. So I was just going to do it real quick. It's probably on eight US eights or sevens. And then like, what was I thinking? <laughs> we forget, we quickly forget how little, we didn't have time last year either, no. but you forget how you're exhausted when you get home. <laughs> you just want to eat. Mm -hmm. maybe shower and clean up and like maybe just relax and talk we did a lot of like especially with our friend Kat last night we were talking and just hanging out and we talked fine. to our families they miss us true so. I just got a cute little call from Bowie and he was having a case of the Sunday night blues and he doesn't want to go to school tomorrow and he just wanted to talk about it so we had a cute little <laughs> check-in but he's fine I think we should talk about this Noro okay it's beautiful. I don't think Noro, at least I don't give Noro enough attention. Like I went through yeah. a Noro spell in the, like, I don't know, maybe 10 years ago. Yes. And I did too. knit everything with Noro, knit so many of those um, striped gloves. Do you remember those? Yes. Where you take the two and then you would rotate. I knit oh so gosh. many pairs of those. I love them. But then I, oh. I have not touched, mm -hmm. I have Noro in my stash, but I haven't so touched I. it in forever and it's it's this beautiful. color brought me back yeah, and I great. used to it was my special yarn especially when I was learning how to knit I made one of those do you remember the headbands everybody made this one hot headband that had a funny name it had buttons on the bottom oh yeah and that was one uh -huh. of my first knitting projects and that was Nora and I was like I will pick out the most special Nora it was like silk garden maybe maybe it's crayon but yeah. um I always loved this specific I bought this several times for other things mm -hmm. <laughs> and it's just really I don't know. I'm back with Noro, I I'm, think. I want to go home and dig it out. Do it. After seeing it. I also, do you remember the Jared Flood striped scarf? We oh, just yeah. do two, two, two of two mm -hmm. skeins and let it do its thing. Like sometimes we're like spin cycles like that too, but two rows, two rows, and everybody made those. And I have mm -hmm. one and they t it does take forever, that one. I wrote a hat pattern based off of that. 
that scarf and <gasps> did the, you know, rotated the the rose. And I remember we were watching Lost at the time, and it was right after that episode. Maybe it was Charlie when he was like in the submarine, and oh they my gosh. they they let him die. And I remember being so mad, and I named the pattern Charlie. Oh, I think it's, I, so maybe that's what his name was, but whatever his name was, that's what I named the that pattern. That was Charlie. No, no, was I, it? Yeah, I was yeah. So I was devastated. Into that show. Like I was done I was with lost too. when I was that happened. Mad. What did mm -hmm. he write on the window? He oh, wrote something yeah. on the window. Yes. That was devastating. Oh my gosh, we're going to have to look this up and yeah. relive the But I wrote sadness. a whole pattern about it because I was <laughs> That was the saddest thing of the whole mm -hmm. show. It was yeah. so heartbreaking because he was the best. Yeah. Charlie, now I want to make the hat. <laughs> right? I want to see the hat. Okay, we're going to have to look it up. To dig it Is out. it on Ravelry? I don't know where it ended up. Oh my gosh. Yeah. Was it striped? It mm -hmm. Like the Jared Flood scarf yeah. to match it? Yeah, because I was knitting the scarf at the time. Stop. I was like, I need a hat to go with my scarf. Oh my mm -hmm. gosh, so do I. Yeah, I have a scarf at home. Okay, we have to find Charlie. <laughs> oh no, he's we're gonna lost. bring we're bringing Nora back. <laughs> <laughs> oh my gosh, at least we are back bringing, in our life. We're bringing Nora back. I don't think it went us. anywhere, but no, it didn't. No, they have really good. Those we just big forgot about skeins it. that are mm -hmm. thinner. Those really giant ones. Yeah, they have the. Mm -hmm cottony ones that are very vivid and bright. They're, this mm -hmm. Nora's amazing. Have you seen the Nora Squares blanket that all those people are working on? And no. it's motifs. It's like a teapot in two shades of Nora and all these little pictures. Ooh. And then um, you put all your squares together and it's a whole thing. And they were all hunting down different colorways of Nora and it became a whole thing where they're okay. all looking together to try to help each other find the Nora <laughs> to make it look like the sample. Anyway. Interesting. It was. I fell down a rabbit hole. It's like a <laughs> current thing that's happening now. We'll have to look into it. Maybe we well, need a. I know. Maybe this is like a special one that they're all looking for, and I oh. have it for my fingerless mitts that I haven't started yet, but I will. Yeah. Okay. Okay. Well, we're already like it's already been twenty minutes that we haven't started, but we would like to give you a little overview of our purchases. Not to be like, here's all the things I bought, but it is fun to see what people pick out at a festival like this. And um, like for us, we really like to get a local wool from the farms here that kind of reminds of, us of our trip and then make a sweater out of it. And that's all part of the memory and that's kind of special. But then we also do other things that are not like that. <laughs> but it's fun to see like, what do knitters pick when they're at Rhinebeck? What, do, what ends up in our bags, like intentionally or unintentionally sometimes because mm -hmm. we get influenced. Or you see samples. That's what happened to us this time. Yeah. We each made a list. Mm -hmm. Did you make yours on paper? Yeah. Mm -hmm. Like you actually wrote yours out. And mine was yeah. in my notes app, mm -hmm. but mine was not organized very well. Yeah, no, I like very We tried. <laughs> yours well, like, went through edits and drafts. <laughs> and there was like a final draft. <laughs> and like, then the I, didn't, before. I didn't buy anything from my list. All of the yarn I bought was from samples that we saw. And that from things that people were wearing. Yeah. This weekend. Mm hmm Yeah. So my list. That's funny. My Ravelry queue now is going to have to be rearranged and mm -hmm. some things are going to get kicked out. Adjusted. Uh-huh. Because we have new yeah. ideas. <laughs> and similar. Uh -huh. But our, our colors. <laughs> yeah. But you mm -hmm. can, you want to show like one. Do you want me to start? Thing, pick something and, or whatever you want to do. Or you want to go through the pile. No, I can start with one. I think we did, like, we're not... We did okay. Yeah. We're going to have to ship home, but we did okay, and we stay... I think I I have a lot of yarn, probably like everyone else, um, so I did okay with yarn. I didn't do so well with yarn uh, adjacent things, so yarn accessories mm -hmm. and... No, I think you did do well with that. I mean, I, I mean, I... in my budget. <laughs> But I, I did very well, but not <laughs> within really my well budget like and control. <laughs> but I think I love things that aren't, not all yarn. Like, I love the extra little things. Yeah. The lotions, the soaps. Yep. The, the handmade things. Fun and the tools and little accessories and stuff. Like, yeah. You have some good stuff that is useful. So, I think at Cake Palooza, right? We got, I got, mm. um... Mohair, right? Mm -hmm. Mohair. Yeah. From Chelsea Yarns. Um, I have no, there's no plan for this, um, but this, this pink is my color right now. Yes. 
Um, I everything I wanted was this color. Uh huh. Um, that did happen a lot. You yeah. Were like, you just go to that. Yep. And like with the fisherman wool, I get stuck on something, and then that's all I knit. So, um, this this magenta e purple is definitely my color, and this gold was just really speaking to me. So I think so these good. were first purchases. Probably, and they were, like, near each other, and we were, like, look how Mm -hmm. cool. Like, if you just buy this, you don't have this. (laughs) Yeah. So I was, like, really supporting this purchase because I was, like, look how amazing they are together. Yeah, we'll do something cool with that. They're Luxe Mohair. (gasps) Uh, Awesome. With a silk blend, so very nice. I'm excited. I'll figure out something. To do with them. You will. Mm-hmm. It'll be so good. Yeah. Cool. You want to do, do more? Go? Or do you want me to go? I'll do Why something. Why don't you do one? Okay. Um, was this at Chelsea mm-hmm. too? Yes, it yeah. was. Okay, mm-hmm. I'll do my Chelsea thing. I was overwhelmed in the beginning by the yarn. At, I don't know. I was kind of in a funny, but I saw these scarves hanging on a dowel rod that they had at Chelsea. And they're just silk scarves that were all ice dyed. And... They had yellow, and my friends were actually trying to influence me to get the yellow, but I really loved this, like, black-purple one, and I think it'll be fun. Even, like, I wear, like, a black crew neck sweater a lot, and I could just, like, do this whole thing, you know. <laughs> I just feel like I really needed this. I think the hair in really adds to <laughs> the it. The hair out would be oh, okay. better. <laughs> but that's my little that's a new look, luxurious, really. non knitting related scarf but they there was a few places that had like a lot of there's a lot of um ice dyed bags Mm -hmm. and a few places have these scarves but i thought this one was like supposed to come home yeah Mm -hmm. really fun but yeah not knitting related at all yeah but from chelsea and with our chelsea purchase we were like the first however many customers got these great bags and the reason these were extra great is because it was raining really hard at that point <laughs> we were fine it was yeah. all fine we had umbrellas we had raincoats we were prepared we had, we had our one boots. stone boots mm-hmm. and they kept our feet dry everything was good we planned it for this because we saw the forecast before we came we knew what we we're getting into we had extra co- clothes in the car we did we had backpacks in the car with extra changes of everything extra yeah. socks all of it Um, We knew exactly what we were doing. (laughs) We were not going to skip or give up. We were going to all the things. But these bags were, like, free for the first however many people. And we were so lucky and happy to get. So we each got a pink iridescent bag. And then to put all our stuff in, we kept it dry. I'm going to show something else. Do you want to do this? Sure. Yes. Let's do it. Together or no? Yeah, I think together. (laughs) Might as well because it's. Related. You'll be shocked at the color I picked. <laughs> and mine, I guess, after my spiel. This is <laughs> not shocking. Here we go. All right. Lobby and me. This is way more pink. Even though I love pink, this is way more no, pink than I would so normally wear. It's so good. It's but, so vivid. Yeah. Do you remember what, where we got these with that? I would have to look. Yeah, it's it was a cross love, from was it love yarn. No, I'm making. Can words. you do the little thing later where you tell yep. them what it was? I'm gonna put in a minute <laughs> in words down here the store because it was a, a store that's probably local that carries Lobby on me. And it was at a cross Cape Palooza. If I had Chelsea my little yarn. booklet, I would just yeah. look. But so we each no, got. Is this Kumo? Mm-hmm. We each got our Kumo in our appropriate color. This was influenced by the sweaters that the ladies at the booth were wearing. Mm-hmm. And yeah. the one was a cap sleeve, sleeveless, layered, vesty. Like, it's a yeah. crew neck. What's the name of the pattern? Do you remember? Dart. Dartmouth? Dart- 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 or Dor- Dartmoor. 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 Mm-hmm. <laughs> We went over this a bunch of times. Yeah. And then the other one had a long sleeve version. But we yeah. were really liking the cap sleeve, sleeveless version. And we were like, how much how much yarn is in that? And what <laughs> yarn is in that? And then the other one was Wednesday Worst is. So you get two of the, what's it called? Kumo. Two Kumo. 
three Wednesday worsted Wednesday. for the size mm -hmm. we need. Yep. Eric and I probably wear the same, same yeah. size, but so we can kind of estimate these together. But that is what we chose based on what they were wearing for real. Mm -hmm. Did not have this on our list, either yeah. of our lists. Or I think on this our radar. was my like splurge yarn, not on my list, not planned for, probably not the most um sensible knit me too um but i'm really excited to have a pink vest or pullover sleeveless thing and the um person that helped us had it over a uh white and blue like pinstripe button down yeah button up um and that looks it looks super ratchet khaki pants on but i'm envisioning green pants mm -hmm. that i'll need to buy after i knit my sweater <laughs> I've got some green <laughs> pants. Green pants are worth mine too. But um, this is both of our kind yeah, of bright, so bold mm -hmm. choice of the whole, like all yeah. of our purchases is probably the brightest, boldest, except for your other one. But um, Oh yeah, that other, yeah. So mm -hmm. it's fun to have like one fun splurgy project. Yeah. Really cool yarn, this brand that we love. Mm -hmm. And then... And I've never purchased this before. Yeah, me either. So None of these. Like my splurge. Yeah. yeah. What's your mm -hmm. color called? Do you know? Uh -huh. Mine's called Coco. K O K K O. Sorry. Is that what is that the color? Yeah. yeah. Sorry, sorry, but S A R I. Not like I'm oh. sorry, but <laughs> oh yes, yes. S A like sorry. And then this is flashy lipstick. Oh, they're different. Well, remember they were out of my matching. Oh right, but so, then I but didn't even know that was okay. Yeah. It's gonna match. Oh, enough. totally, it does. Yeah. Mm -hmm. But <clears throat> I'm gonna put a picture of the sample because you're gonna. It'll be mm -hmm. clear what we're talking about because we. Yeah. I took a picture of her because I wanted to remember like how her where it ended kind of like yeah. where her sleeve sat on her and her styling was really good. I would, I'm like not that stylish, so mine will be more boring. <laughs> but it's fun to see how they layered it and the ladies at that booth were amazing. Mm -hmm. They like kitted this up for us and made it so easy and we yep. were and just like talking and laughing and yeah really helped us like you know it was a fun ex shopping experience yeah, you know what was. I mean it was mm -hmm. like this they is hyped, fun they hyped us up they we made it them fun hype people all the time got us excited about making this so yeah. it will be really special I think mm -hmm. so yeah that was like our maybe flight. next year we'll wear our I know maybe <laughs> if it's depending a warm on year, the weather yeah if it it's a warm year we'll a layer or a Wear a vest. Tank tight or so, yeah. It's funny. Okay. Cool. What else? Um oh, um, do you have your stitch markers that we got yeah. from Yeah. Yeah, we're doing like the cake stuff, that makes sense. In yeah. that order. I don't know where mine are. I can just show mine because we yeah. both got these from Melanated Boho Bay. And let me take them out because they're hard to see. Sorry about the crinkle of my face. Um, because we both were like, those are so cool, <laughs> but her yarn is amazing too. And we were like, we we're just like obsessed with all the stuff she's making, but it has a little sweater with a pumpkin, a little Starbucks cup, a little pink pumpkin. What else? A little leaf wood and a little acorn. And it was just like a little cake fun. And then these little rings that are really awesome like these are really really fun and they were really affordable I was like oh I would pay more for these they're so cute but well they do a good job of commemorating our trip because we do. keep saying oh Halloween fall the leaves yeah. the leaves and, and then, then we would stop coffee. for coffee <laughs> constantly we're both on a coffee schedule and like a similar bathroom schedule because <laughs> that's how that works but it works out really well it's fine. And then to follow that up, these were, I think these were from Cake Palooza. Yeah. Black Pearl Magic. I got these. I'm a huge right. cat lover. So I got these adorable cat stitch markers. And there's a lot of them. There are. There were so many of them. That's really nice. Yeah. So I'm super excited about these. Those are great. Oh my gosh. You guys, I love cats so much. So perfect. <laughs> <laughs> it's fun to have stitch markers. I'm always on the cat theme. Oh, we got our tough stuff there. Uh-huh. Right, yeah. right, 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 right. Some nice hand goodies. Did we get the same, did we get the kind, same kind? We did. Oh, jeez. <laughs> I thought we picked different ones. I did, ones. too. <laughs> we both like the same one, apparently. Yeah. We were oh all selling gosh. them off because they have all the samples out. Yep. 
And I love, I always have these in my bag because like even at the airport, it's not a liquid so you can keep it. I always have it in my knitting bag because my hands get so dry in the winter. And I got a nice little roller scent thing. What, the same scent? I did, yeah, one. same scent. I went nice. all in. I, I like it. Oh, thing. it's good. I forgot. It's oh, yeah. really like mm -hmm. mellow, yeah. but nice. And I got this Shelly Can squirrel there. Yeah. Oh, that's cute. Yeah. I'm a big nature lover, so this is perfect. I only saw lots of cute squirrels. We did see lots of cute <laughs> and squirrels. And all the cute forests <laughs> and leaves and everything here. We better else? speed this up. I know. Here. Sorry. <laughs> <laughs> well, did, was there anything else at cake? I don't think so. We kind of had an even amount of things. That's fine. Yeah. Yeah. So then was Woolen Folk, and I think I bought, that was where I got socks. Oh, yeah, you got socks. <laughs> I saw these socks on Instagram. She hammers and presses the flowers into the socks, and they turn out so vibrant. And I just thought they were so cool. So these are not knit socks. They're just cotton, I think, but I thought they were so rad. Does it say what flower they use? Botanically dyed socks. You have to be careful. You have to treat it like a hand knit because it can fade. But anyway, I don't know. I think it says which flower. Mm -mm. But that's okay. They kind of look like marigolds. But I know, or I like a coreopsis, or yeah. I don't know, but they're cool. Yeah, you're right. I love that orange. I thought that was fun. That was my cake, or my woolen folk. Mm -hmm. Was there anything else at woolen folk? That was just like wandering, so. looking. Yeah. Um, I had a little hangout at MDK, like a little meet and greet type thing. Um, so I hung out with them for a while, which is always kind of my home base, which is really fun. And it was kind of rainy there. And then it cleared up like around three. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Didn't it? And we were just kind of checking out everything. Yeah. There was a lot to see there. We kind of hung out and chilled yep. until the rain cleared. Right. And then started moving about. So I got this beautiful um, hand-thrown, well, I'm going to use it as a coffee scoop. It seems kind of big, but I think, you know, you figure it out. And No, I thought I be, for sure right away that it was that's coffee scoop. Okay. Yeah. From Pip Daddy? Yes. Pip, is that what it was? Pip okay. Daddy. We looked We looked right before this, and I've already We forgot. were looking at the Instagram. Yeah. And, yeah, beautiful. I'm super excited about this. Because they also had these yarn bowls I was obsessed with, and I still wish... That's like my one regret, but I didn't know how I was going to get it home safely because they're pretty big and heavy, but um, her yarn bowls, there was black ones and white ones, and they had a leather handle across the top, which was so unique, mm -hmm. and I just kept picking them all up because they're all a little different, like different heights, different widths, and but I just wasn't sure how to get it home, so I didn't do it, but man, I've been thinking about them ever since, so maybe I'll have to see if she ships, but... Yeah, Pip Daddy on Instagram. If you want, it's like Pip Daddy Ceramics, maybe on Instagram, and you'll you'll yeah. see what we're talking about. And she had really really cool skeleton mugs, skull mugs that were awesome. But I think they were gone before we got there because they were yeah. really cool. They That's were okay. great. We missed them, but mm -hmm. maybe there'll be more. And then hmm. what did we do after? We hopped on the shuttle and went back to our car. And then we had parked at Dutchman's Landing, maybe? Park? Oh, yeah. Park? Maybe it was a park. Dutchman's Landing Park? Or just yeah. Something, we didn't something know. like that. And we did a little hike around the, right. the, the park and then back through the woods. And we found, like, a wetland. And that was super cool. That was awesome. Mm -hmm. It was just kind of a little breather between event, event, event. Like, yeah. go, go, go. Yeah. And we both like a little nature walk. Mm -hmm. And especially in a different state where we don't live with different birds and different trees and leaves. And with the mountains leaves. and elevation. And uh -huh. we saw Bridges and water. And water and bird. Yeah. The standing water, there was like a green, like that a weed. foamy green. Like, ugh, it was really cool and like kind of moody with the weather. It was but it kind of stopped raining at that point and it was a nice time to wander. So we did. And yeah. then it was Saturday. <laughs> With more rain in the forecast, 
but the forecast looked worse than it was. And it was kind of mild, but it looked like it was going to be rain all day, like 90% chance, 80% chance the entire day of New York sheep and wool, which we were all a little bit maybe bummed and nervous about. Everybody was talking about it, but it wasn't horrible downpour. It was kind of a mild rain and it would come and go. And then it did stop for a long time mm -hmm. and we had a break. And so it really was not that bad. And you can duck in buildings and barns. It wasn't a big deal. Mm -hmm. I, don't, I don't think. And we went to the Madeline Tosh meetup. Mm -hmm. Yep. At 11. Um, on the hill, which was really fun. Do you have your stitch marker? I put some, it's probably oh a different gosh. bag. They had these little, little unicorn, unicorn. Stitch markers. No idea where mine is. It's mine's in my purse, but that's yeah. not here. Yeah, where I am right now. But it's a cute little. It's cute. <laughs> and we were handing those out and just kind of. But it was kind of raining at that point. But we were just still finding friends and kind of catching up with people, and it was really fun, even in the rain. <laughs> we had umbrellas and stuff. We were, yeah, dealing with it. And then we started wandering. Yeah. And shopping. Shopping. Was that your first purchase there? This? Yeah. Probably. Yeah, because we kind of made a beeline. Mm -hmm. both. So I got a sweater quantity from Sock Hill Farm of their three-ply worsted. And uh, it's just called gray. Um, and, oh gosh, the, we're going, we were, I had a totally different plan for this. Mm -hmm. And then um, they... They were wearing the kava. That's by Thea Coleman. Right. Maybe. <laughs> yes. Yes. Um, and like I was. The people in the booth yeah. that own Sock Hill, this mm -hmm. girl was wearing this. And we were like, oh, what's that? <laughs> yeah. And we got Sock Hill. La I bought Sock Hill last year to, uh, so to use for an Elblen Glow. And it's amazing. It's a nice woolly. Um, Wool, I guess. Mm -hmm. It's woolly wool. Uh, pretty rustic feeling. Um, and I like more of a, a hardy wool. And so it was, yeah. I think this was my my purchase that I, my repeat purchase in a different color this year that my number one top of the list. So I'm happy that we got that. Yeah. And then I ended up doing that. Well, where's mine? <laughs> it's in a different bag because I bought it today. So yeah, I was a repeat buyer as well because, and even in the same color, but <laughs> <laughs> I, we were both looking for a sweater quantity. Mm -hmm. We both really liked this. And I thought about a bunch of options and I was looking at different sweater patterns and I really did not know what to do, but I ended up buying the navy black, black indigo. That's what it is. Black indigo, sock hill, same worsted three ply. Um, and I used this for my Rhinebeck sweater, this one, um, you know, last week in the car, <laughs> but I love knitting with it so much. And I've been had, I had my eye on Gib by Andrea Mowry. Um, but also the sweater that, what was it? The Cava? Yeah. That uh -huh. this girl was wearing at the Sock Hill booth yeah. that we both fell in love with. So it was fabulous. That, it's like a nice, it is good. cropped wide. There's and it's got slit. so much texture. Was there a side slit? I, I don't like. remember. Maybe. Maybe. But yeah, it's textured mm -hmm. all over, but it's simple, mm -hmm. but it looks so good. And yeah. Gib kind of does that too. Yeah. yeah, they're very similar. Maybe I'll make Gib and you do yeah, Kava. Yeah, there you go. Then, but um, I just realized after wearing this all day that I really like this yarn and I like how it feels. I like the warmth. I like it's not too hot. And it feels good, and you know, because you have a sweater in it too, mm -hmm. that it's just a memorable yarn. It's a special yarn, and it's from here. Is this the one that's pretty close by? Yeah, I think so. I think it said on the back Red Hook, maybe? Okay. They're like really close. Oh, yeah, it yeah. is Red Hook. Mm -hmm. It's probably just down the road, and we're yeah. <laughs> staying here right now. We've probably driven by it 18 times. Probably. <laughs> but I love oh the little label. It's really cute. So, anyway. Well, and I'm pretty sentimental with everything. Like, I can make any uh, inanimate object sentimental. Mm -hmm. um, so, I really love having the sweater and being like, oh, this is my yarn I got, and mm -hmm. blah, blah, blah. Or... And you think about the sheep. Yeah. Because we visited all the sheep, and then you mm -hmm. see the sheep that are from these farms here, yeah. and it's 
like, wow, it really is special. Mm -hmm. So I don't know. I felt like this was exactly what I wanted in this color I wanted. There's also a very good forest green though, or like an olive green that I'll probably get next time. <laughs> I'll think about that. Maybe for, I'll get blue again. Or maybe I'll get blue again <laughs> for a third, no. <laughs> but yeah, so I got a sweater quantity of that. So this was really our first purchase when we got to New York Sheep and Wool on Saturday. And we both got these. <laughs> Didn't we? The, the yarn shack, yeah. It's really it doesn't cute. say where they're from. We have a card, but yeah, the yarn shack, and then they had stickers and postcards with their adorable sheep on them. And yeah, I think we were both just really drawn in by the dyeing. And yeah, these are different. So what's yours called? Edge of Night Marl. Cool, and mine is Black Dirt Marl, which is kind of a brown. And I just saw a hat. You said hat, and I was like, hat. And then she was so fun and nice, and we were talking to her, and she had all those vintage patches. Oh, sorry. Yeah. Spoiler oh, no, alert. No, no. Go for Spoiler it. Spoiler alert. Vintage patches. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> because these were really cool and unique. Yeah. So she had this fabulous cat patch. So vintage. So I had to buy that. <sighs> It's so cute. Kittens. Like, if you know Erica, that she had to have this, and this was made for her to find. Like, no, not joking. Yeah. And it's big. It is big. Yeah, I don't know where it's going to go. And old. Mm -hmm. Like, that looks old. Yeah. Yeah. It's Sorry. quite old. It's just really remarkable. And what was her story? It was, it was like, a friend of hers. Her, her friend's father used to own an embroidery yes shop. yes and he had yes. maybe recently passed away or retired and her friend had had all these patches of his and had given to her thinking that she could do something with them and she said you guys look like you'd like these yeah she could tell <laughs> <laughs> i mean she used to have a vintage shop so like yeah she read you like <laughs> yeah she did she really did yeah <laughs> we stayed and talked to her for like a long time it was yeah really, she was, great. It was really fun we like yeah. really we was like we're into that whole shop what else did we um we both did this oh so yeah in the same flavor right yeah same scent Flavor. <laughs> flavor depending on we're gonna get wild tonight this is why we're so tired <laughs> i got a little one you got a big one i don't know why i mean whatever i'm out at home <laughs> yeah and we knew at this point we were already gonna have to ship home send our stuff in a yep. box at the post office which is what we did last year we both overpacked but we had to this year because you we really needed raincoats layers umbrellas boots different shoe choices like all the things in case everything got wet we've i've used like a lot of the stuff i packed already mm -hmm. and needed it and yeah. even the different sweaters i wore i can't believe you i wore, wore all, all yours. four of them mm -hmm. we both wore four yeah over the course of the events and stuff mm -hmm. that we did which we have done a lot and yeah. so i don't regret packing that much and we just can't fit there's no way all this is going to fit in our bags either yeah. one of us it's not. This is unique. Okay. I got this fabulous turkey. Oh. It is. Oh my gosh. From Lana Art. Uh huh. It's just so. It's the unique. details, the shapes are yeah. so lifelike. <laughs> I can't believe it. It's so the cute. Feet. Look at his butt. The butt. <laughs> his whole profile is so real. It's so good. Like they did a great job. Do they all their animals were incredible. Yeah, they we really looked were. At all of them. Mm -hmm. I've never seen a turkey though before. No, it was so. Unique. And I thought it was a pom pom at first <laughs> because there's just so much like floof, but it's yeah. so cool. Those are amazing. Mm -hmm. um, did you do? Oh, should we do this? Yeah. Was this a New York sheep and wool? Yeah, yeah. it was. Mm -hmm. Yeah, the days all blend together. I don't know what day this was, but we both got Utopia goodies, which they do lotions and balms and all kinds of amazing things. What are yours? Mine is the best hand cream ever. So I did lavender and sage and then orange and clove. Ooh. And I've been using this probably for a year now, and I'm just out at home. So it really was a restock and, you know, 
it's more fun to see it in person and buy it from from the the maker. And when I, I ordered, smell all the scents. Yeah, smell. I I was like a perfume store when we left. I had everything. <laughs> yeah, but when I had a mix of like I don't know. Ordered everything. from. Etsy the last time uh. she had sent a little note along that she used to be a buyer for Yonkers which was one of our now closed but it used to be a department store that was started in Des Moines yeah and a um, really old beautiful one downtown yeah. that is no longer there but yeah that she was a buyer for that and so she must she saw your address and was like yeah by the yeah, way she was on there I used to Des Moines connection, so that's fun. That that uh, that's cute. I that's think cool. that's Iowa has so many weird connections. Mm-hmm. Everyone's like, oh, and I they'll mention to do it. Uh huh. Like work it into the yeah. story. So that's that was cool. fun to meet her and yeah. And I just got lavender, vanilla, another balm. I need multiple of these for my knitting bags. I keep one in my regular purse, so I'll probably put one in each, so I don't like have to switch it all the time. I always can find one because I always. Like, I get, like, dry, cracked hands in the winter, and, yeah. This helps. And it smells really nice. But, yeah, anyway. Do your, um, boondoggle. Toggle. Right. Right? Isn't that yes. what it Yes. This was a thing that, like, called out to me <laughs> from the bin. Um, and I bought Boondoggle every year. So this is my third year at Rhinebeck. And every time I pass by, I think it's the daughters of the farm or the girls that work there. I see them every year and I always have a little chat or whatever and say hi. And I think I have a, a mitten kit and then another one that's just a little, um, naturals kit. And then this was a hat set and they had lots of different colors in a bucket and they had some that were all browns. They had some with the, like a brown and a blue or grays and a blue. And then I saw this yellow and then they kind of let me make my own set because it was with browns, but I was more into grays. And you found a perfect one with a blue that we just switched the yellow and the blue. Sorry, I just hit your leg. Okay. <laughs> so I got grays and a yellow, which in this room is probably looking different, but it's all their little naturals. Plus mm-hmm. this awesome yellow that was dyed with goldenrod, which makes a really nice, like in real life, it's really cute. And this is, do not ignore it looks like it got eaten by a dog but it was the rain it was actually my umbrella (laughs) that snagged it and it was all wet my inside of my bag was like wet that whole day so luckily you know this resists the yarn's all fine but like this is a little ragged but that's the hat that you can make kind of any stripe I think with it gives you an idea of like where to put your colors but I love this and then we just saw some friends tonight and they got these too so it was really (laughs) funny that Everybody spotted this cute little hat set. How fun, like, with little minis that you know are already made to be enough, but you don't have to buy full skeins, and you can mix and match. So I thought that was cute. Very cute. I'm going to do these. Yeah. If you can find it, or is it hard nope, to find? I got it. I cool. It I think that. Oh, you got Oh, I got it. Sure. We, um, I guess for the first time, Katrinkles was at New York Sheep and Wool, which is cool. Um, everybody knows Katrinkles because we all have a little bit of this stuff, I think. I'm going to fix mine because they're a little Yeah, mine are disheveled. I got the Halloween ones. I'm very into the Halloween right now. <laughs> oh my gosh. So what, a bat? Or always. A skull? A yeah. ghost? A pumpkin? Yeah, a lightning rod? A uh, couple pumpkins? I love those. I have a ghost that glows in the dark, yeah. an older one. But this one's like iridescent, maybe? Yeah. I love it. I don't know why I'm showing you. <laughs> no, no, it's good. And then I got little Rhinebeck sweaters again because I lost mine from last year. I gave them to the friends last year that we came with. I think I gave everybody one little one. And then I lost mine, so I got three more, and now I'll be set. <laughs> and then we each got one of these little guys. Yeah. I got an orange that. one. I yeah. got this one. They're and I really got this cool. Cat ruler. Cute. That's yeah. so cute. So I thought that it would just drop in my knitting, my sock knitting bag. This is my, um, my, uh, I, kn- I always have a pair of socks on, on the needle. So I, they're always in this green bag. So I thought mm-hmm. I'll just throw this in there and then, nice. yeah, I don't have to dig out my a little tape measure color. every time. Mm-hmm. That's smart. Yeah. Easier to put in And small. it's cat themed. Yes, <laughs> it's cute. It's really cute. Um, Let's 
you got down there? A book? <laughs> By my friends Mary J. Mucklestone and Gooden Johnson. And it's the Grand Shetland Adventure Knits from their trips to Shetland. And I've been seeing photos of this for the past couple months. And I was like, when I see you there, because their book release was during Rhinebeck. So um, I was super excited to come check it out. And then it's beautiful. And they signed it, which was extra sweet. And the photos are gorgeous from the island. And it's just a beautifully done book. Um, it's cool, it's based on their travels there. And there's some, let me find some projects to show without a pattern on the page. There's a hat. Gudrun was wearing this cardigan that we saw twice. Every during, time we saw it, we, we were, were like, we both have, have that. Making it in that exact color. And she's like, it's called Old Gold. And it was at Jameson. I think it's more towards the back. Yeah. But we were both like, hmm. Oh, and this is really pretty. Uh, yeah, that one this, looks really good too. And Mary Jane is just like so stylish and has the coolest outfits and puts these. So, like, they both layered their knits, like these cardigans over like another vest and it looked so good and I'm like if I tried to do that the way they did it though if you just copy what they did you'd be great but, but they just looked so cool and stylish oh yeah wait <laughs> they had these socks at the booth too and I really love them in these exact colors which is funny like I'm into these primary colors like the red yellow oh, blue that, lately that's just good too, this one remember? too mm -hmm. right oh yeah everything's great right <gasps> in here Honestly, so yeah, I because I didn't even look to see how many patterns this book had, and then I realized after I got it, there's just so much in here, which is one of those cool resources that you're just like, oh, I'm gonna, it's one of those you'll use for years. It's very classic, um, kind of vintage vibes. I'm gonna find this card again. <laughs> Sorry, <laughs> it's so worth it. I promise. There okay. it is. <laughs> Let me just cover the one. I'm just going to show the one page because the other page has pattern stuff on it. But it is this longer green with big, like, slanted pockets. Mm -hmm. Cozy, cozy. And she did hers in old gold. I don't know if I can find it. There you go. You got it. Okay. Mm -hmm. yeah. It's amazing. And we saw her wearing it in real life. Mm -hmm. I bet there's a better picture over here. Well, there's the pocket detail. Yeah. It's so cool in real life, though. And then you can see her. Just cozy. Mm -hmm. Anyway, very cool book. There they are. They're so cute. And then just to have them sign it, and, you know, they're so happy and excited about it, and it was fun. Yeah. They were very sweet. Nice to, yeah. to meet them. No doubt. Yeah. I think that's it. That, did we see? It's like, <laughs> that probably seemed like a lot, but yeah. I feel like we kind of... did okay. I think so, too. Yeah. But got some little treats and... Mm -hmm. And we went to the, the Jill Draper thing. Yes. And I've got a list of yes. what to order. I didn't... You get... you. I'll order it. I was afraid to. More shipping and we just were so limited by space and... I know. I and really, money. I really wanted this Mohonk <laughs> light, but I didn't have a super clear plan for it. But it was this beautiful chartreuse... Me and Sonia Phillips were looking at the same ones, and she's like, you get these three, and I'll get these three. And I really, really was going to, but then I was like, I do not have a clear plan of what I'm doing, so I'm going to wait. And mm -hmm. like you said, order with my plan in mind so I don't get too few or, you know, yeah. like not plan it. So Re refill the that budget. a beautiful the event. Budget. Go to. And that event is on <laughs> the river with the beautiful bridge. Gosh, it was gorgeous today because it was a little bit sunny and it's a really cool location and just seeing all her stuff out there and she had beautiful samples and some little snacks and stuff it was really fun to see all her good stuff mm -hmm. but yeah. that's oh uh -uh. wait did i show perfect blend blend oh no you forgot <laughs> our very first stop on thursday was perfect blend and we loved everything in that store mm -hmm. the books the, the yarn samples. the samples mm -hmm. everything it's just like, ugh. but everybody goes there all at once, which so it's kind of chaotic and fun. But I did find this ball of Lopi, which I can't always find. And especially in person, I have to see which blue it is or which I like to see the colors in person. But I started a Matuaka sweater <clears throat> at home and it's a color work sweater. And I needed this 
vivid blue is such a pretty blue and I saw they had it at Perfect Blend and I'm like, well, I'm just gonna grab it here instead of like trying to find it later and I have the other colors at home. I just was missing the blue. So I was so happy that they had this and I got to pick it up and I swear that's it <laughs> from that. And they're so fun in that store. They get so excited because it is every a lot of people's first stop and they had been having people come in from that Monday like the whole week before they take pictures of their customers and post them and they're so welcoming and fun and you know it's like exciting to stop by there and I could have bought like everything there mm -hmm. but I just was like ah oh, it's just fun we're like you know fresh yeah to the Rhinebeck weekend and mm -hmm. going in there was so much fun to kind of start it off but yeah, yeah it's I a think nice warm welcome it is mm -hmm. that's right it's like a good start and that's it just feels like the right way to ease into the whole <laughs> time there. And I think they gave me tea. Oh yeah, you got tea. I got a little tea, which is great. Because they're a tea house too. They have like a whole section of tea. Yes, yeah, spicy black tea. Cute. So that's it. Mm -hmm. And that's our little recap. We had an amazing time. Mm -hmm. The weather was a little bit of a curveball for everybody. And I mean, there was nothing we could do about the weather, but we did our best and we tried to prepare and pack the best we could. And it's, you know, it didn't like stop us, but, <laughs> but you know, and we took breaks here and there for coffee, mm -hmm. packed stuff. We didn't really need our extra clothes that we packed for wet weather, but we did it just in case. Mm -hmm. Our blundstones saved us. <laughs> yeah. Footwear, footwear. <laughs> I mean, it really was important. There was mud. Yeah. There was puddles, mm -hmm. wet grass. And with blundstones, you kind of don't have to worry about it. You can just wipe them off and it's fine. Yeah. Raincoats, umbrellas, putting them in the bags and out of the bags. And we all kind of were dealing with that. But, but it was great. It was super yeah. fun. We had a great time. Mm -hmm. I think we both did have. Yeah, we ate all the things. Ate all the things. Tried all the. We had the donuts. Yep. And the cider. This. Oh yeah. And the apple crisp. Mm hmm. Mm hmm. We yeah. did a good job. We did the things mm -hmm. we needed to do. We sat. We, we were on the hill. The leaves were still beautiful. Still, we were worried if they might be all gone because it's a week later than last time, and the weather has been different. But that was all really beautiful, and we saw the camelid parade today yes. and the leaping llamas. <gasps> We got to see all of Leaping Llamas <laughs> and all of the parade kind of twice. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And usually we stumble upon part of it and miss a lot of it. Or like last year, I was trying to peek in to see the Leaping Llamas, but everybody was, I was like in the back and I couldn't really see. So we kind of got a front row seat this time and got to see everything. That was really fun. Yeah. And the llama won. Do you remember his name? Mm, Gus. I think it was Gus. He was big. Uh-huh. He was <laughs> tall, which makes sense. Uh -huh. But some of them just don't want to jump, so it's... Yeah. Anyway. Mm -hmm. That was our Rhinebeck recap of, like, our shopping experience. And I think we're going to go to bed now. We have to pack. <laughs> we have to pack. <laughs> like, put on our pajamas, get cozy, mm -hmm. clean up a little bit, and get ready to head back to the city tomorrow for our New York City adventures. So we added on a few days at the end of our trip in New York City because how can you not go do that next? And it is a big shift. I remember from last year, it's like, yeah. whoa, here we are. <laughs> Let's go. Let's go get some pizza <laughs> and go walk around. So we don't have super strict plans for the city portion of our trip, but we will see how we feel when we get there and take it day by day and do whatever we're feeling. So we're excited. Anyway, good night. Thanks for hanging out with us, and I'll see you in the next one. Bye. Bye.